Hey everybody, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So uh, just past my uh, ESA electrical inspection here uh, on Thursday. I uh, passed it the first time. Um, uh, I obviously uh, did some readings on my own. I'm not an electrician by any degree and I do not, I am not responsible for you uh, failing your inspection nor you performing any electrical work and not being sub to par or anything along those lines. This is just a quick uh, general consensus of what I found I was able to pass the first time with and uh, what I what I encountered as I was doing my own own uh, research as per what was code and what wasn't and uh, what I found obviously was was okay because I uh, got my inspection just on Thursday and uh, everything passed so super happy about that so uh, these are just a few things that I have and that you'll obviously need if you're wiring a garage like I am with a and I have a 200 amp panel which I guess I should start on that first I had an electrician come in I had a certified electrician come in and install this for me he just did the panel and he ran this uh, single outlet here for me with the steel uh, steel coated wire or protected wire and a 120 amp breaker in there it's a, like I say a 200 amp mm -hmm. panel he came and also did the meter base for me and had hydro come and hook up just uh, yesterday so yeah, and now I now have electricity out here and so previous to that though I had uh, like I say the inspector come out and do my inspection for me on Thursday and uh, give me the go ahead to carry on and keep doing what I'm doing I can now uh, get this insulation installed into these walls I have my doors in my garage I'm gonna be installing them today I think as well just thought I'd show everybody and kind of share some knowledge of what I like I say what I did and what it seemed to pass for me so first off I was when I was running all my wiring, I guess I should get into that. I wanted to do all 20 amp circuits, and uh, what you want to run is a, a yellow 20 gauge or 12 gauge. Sorry, uh, this is a 12-2. It has a neutral and it has a hot and it has a ground in there. This wire was uh, acceptable for uh, 20 amps on a 20 amp breaker. Um, uh, this is another 20 gauge or 12 sorry 12 gauge 20 amp wire, and uh, this is. Uh, meant more for 240 volts as you can see you have uh, black and uh, red and the ground these obviously normally indicate two hots and no neutral you can't go and run this into this and try and designate that as a white and get away with that they don't uh, they don't really accept that so that I didn't do these are my cable clamps here that I really like to use these things I found were really nice you could you could get like one or two two wires underneath them and do a do a nice job at clamp, clamping the wires and keeping them uh, nice and center in the middle of your your board the distance has to be I found was 5 8 minimal between the actual edge of your uh, 2 by 6 or 2 by 4 whatever the face of your uh, finishing board is to the actual wire I couldn't find any actual code per se on the actual uh, holes running the wire so but what I did though I did chalk a line and just uh, kept everything nice and pretty square and straight this top one I didn't and uh, you can see what happened it got a little wonky so yeah that's what happens when you don't chalk a line that's when you do so yeah anyway so I like I said the whole size is um, uh, I went with a one inch hole for when I was doing four wires and uh, that seemed like it was you know good and acceptable and he, he obviously passed that I then went with a seven eighths hole the rest of the way pretty well through the entire building for uh, pretty well all other wires and uh, he accepted that. The most I ever really stuck into the 7 8 hole was uh, two wires and in some cases I did three but that was only to run my actual uh, thermostat wire up to where my unit heater is going to be up there. And yeah so anyway these boxes as well too uh, that was saying you actually need the proper box um, uh, to actually hold the actual right gauge wire and the wire count. That's a big thing, the, the cubic uh, cubic inches or the cubic centimeters of the actual box to, back to actually determine the amount of wires the box can hold. Box have different depths. This is a two and a half, or this is like a, I think it's like a three inch by a by three inch. So uh, there's a lot, lot, I can get a lot more wires in there. The problem was when I was wanting to run this uh, 12, 12 two wire, 
in these boxes the cable count got real real uh got uh, got added up real quickly especially with these steel boxes with the these uh steel clamps these all count one two and then the actual receptacles will count as one and two so there's four wires almost taken right away out of this box without any wires in it the larger your wire size you can't hold uh, obviously less wires so I had to go and get bigger boxes before this is all before my inspection i just kind of found these things out and i bought in the handy pack of these first but they weren't going to work so these actually weren't a bad price they were only like I think two bucks a box they weren't too bad for really what they were and i'm uh, pretty satisfied with the product they're fairly sturdy and got them on there they got two nice grounding tabs and yeah so and then also too when you're running your your boxes for him to come they want to see all wires terminated in the actual uh, boxes as per where they're going to be you can see all of mine are terminated as per where they're going to be you want to keep i think it's about like 10 most people say per breaker but i did a minimum of uh, uh six or seven i kept on mine seven i think was my max or sorry my max was six or seven sorry not minimum um, you don't want to be putting any many more than really like eight in my opinion if you're going to be in a shop running you know some decent decent uh, amperage pulling uh, devices on those outlets so I, I i went ahead and did i think it was like i say six six on the one the one was four i labeled them all as well too at each wire for each run just so that i now know in the future as well too what what wires are in charge of which run This did a magic marker, permanent marker on the uh, actual sheathing itself. So, and then when you terminate them in the boxes, you obviously you need, or in the actual panel, you need your clamps on there. Uh, these are your 3 8 and uh, this was a 3 quarter for my uh, 6 2 wire, which is going to be for my 50 amp outlets. I have two of them, one for a compressor and one for a welder with uh, dual pole BR breakers in there. You can see they're a little bit of a larger clamp. You're going to need those in there to secure the wires into the panel. The uh, distance of the staples, or the actual screw, or the, sorry, the actual wire clamp himself make a difference. If you're using a plastic box, uh, it was six inches. If you're using a steel box like this one, because they have the cable clamp inside, you can get away with 12 inches. So uh, I just kind of doubled up just in case he, if he was going to be upset about it, then I, uh, I had kind of gave myself both. Yeah, um, uh, if you're having a heater or uh, for my instance, a hoist, um, you can uh, have the actual wires terminated in the boxes with uh, morettes on them. As long as in the end you end up putting a cover on them before the actual device is here if you want to get your final inspection done but hopefully I should be able to get my heater and my hoist and all my walls done at the same time and maybe I'll just get them to sign off on all of it but regardless I'm pretty sure I read you could get your final inspection done as long as those uh, those devices or the wires are covered in the devices aren't on site and they're uh, put proper covers on them my lights I ended up doing I was going to run switches, uh, one switch, sorry, for my four light or four, four lights that I have in here, and uh, I was going to hardwire them, but I ended up finding a really good deal on some lights, uh, lights that I could plug in. So I figure I now have a potential to run eight lights and even some fans up there as well too. So I did uh, four outlets for the one switch by the door here, carrying that run up and over, power to the switch, and then two of my lights or I guess outlets sorry receptacles figure it'll be a nice uh, nice if I ever want to change the lights or anything like that or like I say add more rad fans now I have the availability to do that with uh, with ease I uh, yeah so I, pretty well that's about it I guess that I kind of endeared or that I can remember at this moment for you oh yeah obviously too from uh, jumpers you want to have the appropriate jumpers in there if you have grounds doing two out with it obviously making a, a jump from the one side of the outlet to the next. It's nice to have the Marat done and a jumper that will go to your outlet so that way you don't have, you're not trying to like twine wires together and yeah, you want you want a Marat on there for it. The same situation of uh, I went off here and now I'm running up to this box up there. You wanna make sure that I have my hot on the one side 
and then I have my other two feeds, so the one wire going up and the other wire going this way um, uh, on the same circuit. Have them ready together with the copper jumper, jumpers that I'll strip back and then attach to the one side of the outlet. That way you have good secure connection to your, to your outlet or your receptacle. Yeah, and that's about it. I guess I, the clamps as well too, like I say, every six to 12 inches, six inches for plastic box, 12 inches for steel box. And uh, I think it's a, every four feet, they want it, the actual wire being ran vertically or horizontally. Never try and run across a top plate. Always either bore holes, go straight up and come across a truss. If you're running wire like I did up here, my attic won't have an access hole. I read it. I think it's within like, if it's within five feet, you need to protect the wire from any nails. Or, uh, so like I have a board over top of it. And I'm pretty sure for obviously being stepped on as well too. But yeah, that's about that's about it. That's my garage. And I'm, uh, she's coming along. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to give you guys an update of my doors. Hopefully by the next few days here. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.